Canada is capping the number of international student permits that will be issued over the next two years. The federal government says it will approve just 360,000 undergraduate study permits for 2024. That is 35 percent less than in 2023. It also announced changes to the post-graduation work permit program. So how significant are these changes and what impact could they have on Canada's economy? Let's bring in Benjamin Tal, Deputy Chief Economist at CIBC. Benjamin, thanks so much for uh, joining us this afternoon. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So how, how significant is this cap? I mean, it, the 35 percent decrease from 2023, we're actually talking about 200,000 fewer international students coming. Yes, it's uh, very significant. You know, until now, we have been talking about supply, 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 and that's the right uh, direction because we have to increase supply, but it takes forever. Whatever you do, you know, remove HST, do all kinds of other things, it takes five, six years to get that extra supply. At the same time, demand is rising and rising and rising. So you have to do something about demand. And we have been talking uh, of, over the past uh, few months about uh, international students and the fact that uh, we need to cut the number to make sure that we can house them. And that's exactly what this policy is trying to do. So to put it in simple terms, uh, today there are roughly uh, 1 million uh, students in uh, Canada, foreign students. If we didn't do anything, within a year or two, this number will have gone to 1.4, another 400,000. Now this number will cap the number, this uh, policy will cut the number to about 1 million in 2024. It will not really move from there, and then it will start going down in 2025. It's a very significant move, a move that is in the right direction, probably the most significant move in recent history. There's also those changes to, to the work permit. So just for the, the, the details on that, um, there's two that I think might be uh, significant here, uh, Benjamin. Uh, there work permits after private college programs, uh, students will no longer be eligible for uh, a post-graduation work permit upon um, upon completing their, their uh, study. Um, so that's a, a study program that's part of a cur curriculum licensing agreement at a, a private college. And then when it comes to work permits for spouses, uh, work permits will only be available to spouses of international students in master's and um, doctoral programs, so not in undergraduate or, or college programs. Um, what do you make of those changes? I think it's, again, the right direction for sure. We have a situation in which, uh, first of all, the government a few months ago decided that they're going to raise the amount of money that foreign students should arrive with to 20,000. That's the right thing following the example of Australia. That's the right thing to do, so that's done. Now we have a situation in which many of them arrive with spouses that can actually work and therefore they stay in Canada and apply for other things. So I think that this move is in the right direction. We have to realize one thing. The government is really after the bad players, as they call it. All kinds of colleges that are not really colleges. They are basically selling Canadian citizenship on a chip. That's basically what happened here in many, many cases. And now the federal government cannot tell provincial, provincial governments what to do, but those provincial governments will have to impose those quotas on different institutions. I suggest that probably will not touch the big universities, but they will go after those bad players, small colleges that were taking advantage of the situation, and that's where you will see most of the change. So each province will get a quota. As you know, Ontario will have to cut by 50%. A lot of it will be small colleges, that uh, most of the students there are foreign students, in some, in some of them, all of them are foreign students, and they are not really colleges. Uh, but at the same time, there are some uh, provinces like uh, Saskatchewan that will not reach the quota. So overall, I suggest that the number will go down over the next few years, and that's something that is uh, healthy for affordability. Yeah, so, so the government is, is um, making it sort of um, split up by, by provinces based on, on population sizes, um, that 300, uh, or the decline uh, to, to uh, no, rather, the allowance, the 360,000 would be split uh, uh, proportionately dependent on population. But you're thinking that it's also going to depend on the school itself, like the province is going to perhaps uh, decide which schools need to actually be making the, the cuts? 
Yes, exactly, because the federal government cannot do that. The provincial government has to do that. Mm. So they will have to choose. They can go after a big university or they can go after those bad players, small colleges. I think the first line, line of defense, of course, will be to go after those colleges, and that's exactly what we are going to see. We know that the 20 percent of uh, foreign students in those colleges are not really registered or they are not really studying anything. So we know that the system is being abused in a significant way, and these uh, measures are aimed to fix it. And therefore, you have to go after those colleges and fix the situation because this is not education. This is uh, something totally different. So, so what sort of an impact do you think that this could have beyond the the, the colleges or or um, you know the schools that uh, you know would be hit by these cuts um, and you know the financial impact to to them to their their institutions? But when you're thinking more broadly, uh, students tend to rent. What do you think it could mean for for the rental market? Yeah, it should ease the pressure on the rental market over the next few years. It will not solve the affordability crisis that we are in, for sure. We have many other dimensions to this crisis. But this is one element, an immediate element, that can be removed from the equation. So if you reduce the number of foreign students from 1 million to, let's say, three or 400,000, which is a reasonable number to have, I think that's a step in the right direction. It will hmm. take a while to get there. It's not something that uh, you, will, you can do overnight. In 2024, the impact will be very marginal. 2025, you start seeing the impact and then go forward. I think that it will be more than two years. I think that although the cap is for two years, it will be more than that, because this is a major inflationary force in the rental market, and our affordability crisis is not going to disappear in two years. And Benjamin, just really quickly, um, what about the labor market? If, if uh, these uh, graduates don't have work permits or the spouses don't have work permits, will that register, do you think? Is that going to be a, an impact on our labor market? Absolutely, and maybe it's a good thing, quite frankly, because one of the reasons why productivity in Canada is negative is because we have availability of uh, cheap labor compared to the U.S., where they don't have that. So we have a situation in which companies don't invest in productivity enhancing methods. They are not uh, trying to improve their productivity and replace labor with capital. They just go with the cheap labor that is available through the channel of foreign students and their spouses. If you don't have it, guess what? You have to do something else, which is actually positive in terms of paying more to their uh, employers and try to improve productivity. What we need desperately to do that.